Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show episode 484. Let's talk about some professionalized summer slammy wrestling. I'm going to have a great night here. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. It's the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, with a whole line of people also joining me from a couple rivers away. It is Papa Lunchbox, your Papa Lunchbox, DJ Lunchbox, the man behind the panel riot, the man behind the power hour with me walking down uh, jauntily down the river on a lunch break. It's you. Hello, Sorg. I'm coming from. I'm coming to you from high above downtown Pittsburgh. Oh, I've climbed up here out of boredom, and now I have no idea how to get down. Uh, should we do the show before or after you call the police slash Superman? Yes, and also with us uh, from uh, down the highway, it is Riz. Hi, Sorg. Riz plays games on the Twitter, on the YouTube's. Riz plays games. By the way, uh, Riz plays games. Great Kelly challenge is on fire right now oh yeah uh so go to youtube check that out um and also i'm gonna have some more videos up for, shortly for you but i'm here to talk about wrestling yes sorry. he is That's yes he talking. is also with us from poughkeepsie new york and he uh by way of brooklyn this past weekend he is the huggable mad mike there ain't no stopping us now sorg there ain't no stopping us now for for I got, I got Bailey bands I got your Bailey autographs I got your NXT programs I got your event shirts I got everything you want from NXT Takeover so like, <laughs> and we'll be talking a Brooklyn accent and we'll be talking some NXT which is funny since you spent most of your time in the Bronx um but anyways uh but you get it from one night right you you get an accent and you turn into an asshole that doesn't respect women's wrestling right mm-hmm. I you know fuck those women. No, whoa, 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 hey, hey, no, whoa, hey, no, wow. Hey, wait, 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 no, hey. I meant that in the fun sense. No. Oh, no. Uh, 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 still disrespectful, but no, no, it's, more it's acceptable? Disrespectful. But no, I enjoy their wrestling. I'm glad we acknowledge it, you know, when we're yeah. being offensive. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. No, I, and I, by the way. Knows I'm kidding. I, I literally spent dozens of dollars on Bailey merch. So dozens. Clearly, clearly I'm a fan. And... We were the best part of that crowd this weekend. So. Yes, it was. We'll get into the NXT TakeOver talk in just a little bit. But first, I want to remind you, we're over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can drop us an email at that uh, email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And, of course, please uh, uh, drop us a line to the voicemail. 412-206-WMS0. And uh, you can find us on the social medias, Mayhem Show on the Twitter. We, we're very active during the wrestling shows, whether it be Raw or all the stuff happening on Wednesday night. Uh, Mad Mike is, is the MVP of the social medias right now with that. Uh, and, and Tough Enough and all that. Well, I guess that's not happening much anymore. And check out all the other shows, including Indie Mayhem, The Middle Week Wars, The Raw Wrap-Ups, and, and everything else. We try to cover as much as we can, as much as we possibly can in professional and, and so wrestling. Hmm? We will be doing the Diva Search. Oh jeez! When that starts, oh. yeah. Oh jeez! Oh, yeah. oh yeah, it's gonna happen. Jen can Collins, we, can I we already vote as a that. show to not. Ugh. Ugh. No, I won't. I won't bring that talk here. That, yeah, exactly. That, that means here. it's not happening on this show. We compartmentalize it because some people want to hear that, okay? And we don't listen. Who, listen, the happened? Wrestling Mayhem Show has a good name, Sorg, and we're gonna sully it with Diva Search. Yeah. It's not like we it's have good. it before. Did you listen it's to the first be, episode? Well, honestly, honestly, to to Man Mike's defense, we we have covered Impact Wrestling before. This is true. All true. All true. Uh, but anyways, uh, so go check all that out. Uh, please subscribe. Please sign up for the newsletter. Get you uh, information about uh, this podcast and IndieWrestling.us and all the re- releases over there. And of course, our Patreon at patreon.com slash Show. Big ups to our friends, the WrestlingRevolution.com. See you over there holding it down from the very beginning. And also uh, supporting the panel right on Patreon as well. A lot of peas in there. Need to readjust oh, my yeah. pop filter. Sorry about that. Uh, and uh, and of course, oh, oh who am I forgetting? Again, his name escapes me. 
Ah, uh, oh, intern Stan. No, not Stan. him. No. Not him. That's not the Patreon supporter that's been with us almost as long as the Zero Two K. It's Bo Diggity. 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 Woo! Are you sure it wasn't intern Stan? Not, I don't know. Maybe I. Mm, no, AJ doesn't get high enough for that. Uh, but anyways, thank Nobody you so much does. for supporting, and you can too <laughs> at patreon.com/slash wrestling mayhem show, where you can support the show and be our boss. Tell us what you think, and uh, we will listen. We listen to the people that pay us. Let's be honest, you know, uh, and help support and help the show grow through that method. And if you got something to plug. If you got a website, you got something like that, st- jump on there, give a couple bucks, and we'll be talking about it at the beginning of every show, too. We Just will like, stick it in your plug the entire parts. time. Uh, Ciro Antonio Garza is doing an episode-by-episode episode recap of Lucha Underground after having watched the whole season. So he's Fantastic. looking for all the little like hidden, hidden, hidden Easter eggs and stuff. So Fantastic. Kind of like the forward Easter eggs and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I dig it. I dig it. Uh, so let's get into our first discussion of the evening. Of course, SummerSlam happened this weekend. Uh, a lot happened there. Rolling into Raw with like it really did feel like. Did it feel? Did you guys get a WrestleMania vibe uh, rolling from at least SummerSlam to Raw this year? Did they succeed in in a step further in SummerSlam becoming the WrestleMania Junior of of, of this half of the year? Mm. Yeah, it was huge. Mm-hmm. the the entire The entire lead up, um, uh, it was it just everybody who I talked to about it was like, it just feels like it, it feels like WrestleMania. It mm-hmm. feels like WrestleMania this year. Mm-hmm. It was four hours, a bunch of huge matches, celebrity guest stars. It was it, they booked it just like WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say yes and no. Um, WrestleMania generally doesn't end with a question. Uh, and and the two the generally. two big matches right the two big matches like Cena and Rollins and Taker and Brock both had kind of questionable shenanigany endings right and that's right. that's generally not how they do Mania but as far as the atmosphere as far as the build as far as pretty much everything else yeah it felt like wrestling. it was there certainly certainly what say you Rizical? Uh I, I again, I go with what Lunchbox said. It was a huge, huge uh, wrestling thing where, sorry, uh, where they had pe- they had people from different aspects of television coming in to SummerSlam. They had ESPN covering SummerSlam. They have all these different aspects to cover SummerSlam. But like Mad Mike said. They don't really end on a question like that mm-hmm. for WrestleMania. But okay. we know it's not WrestleMania because of that question. We know that there's probably going to end near or around WrestleMania. So get ready because we're probably going to see a 16-time world champion at, at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, it, it, it just felt different. If, that, if that's a good, it, 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 it didn't feel like WrestleMania. It felt like a different wrestling show, mm-hmm. like the lead up, the build up, and everything in between. But it got to own like like we did have other stuff, you know, the shenanigans and such happening here, um, which I think they they I think generally SummerSlam has ended with something to that extent the last several mm-hmm. years. Like it's been a very questionable ending show in general, which really kind of changes the trajectory, the long term trajectory. I think to WrestleMania and sets the pace for the re- next few months because they're so hard to get people on for the next few months through until WrestleMania season starts. But uh, I mean, it, it could be. It's not also confined to the roles of, oh, let's not have this kind of finish at a WrestleMania, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so to that, I think it really kind of uh, it, it held up. And and uh, did, what did ESPN do? Did they just cover it over the weekend? Because I, I thought there was going to be something at SummerSlam involving, especially the coach at least. Coach was there at 10 a.m. on Sunday. Oh, wow. Yeah, and he interviewed John Cena. And um, even Sports Illustrated, after the Taker and Brock match, they covered it. Mm-hmm. And a lo- I heard a few people say that the reason that WWE did the finish they did for uh, Taker and Brock is because they're kind of throwing shade at Major League Baseball for them screwing up instant replays. Really? That's what I've heard. 
Wow. I don't know how true that is. It might just be a coincidence. It might just be they don't know how to book Lesnar losing. Um, but it, it was thrown out there as a suggestion. So, all right, all right. Well, I, yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see where they go from that. Uh, over, you know, when do they do Taker Brock three? Because let's be honest, it's happening. Do we wait Survivor till WrestleMania? Those, you think they would do it at Survivor Series? Are they going to try to build that event up again? I think they need to. I think they definitely need to. Royal Rumble already stands apart because it's Royal Rumble, and we took away Elimination Chamber, so which really flattened Royal Rumble's purpose. Uh, but yeah, Survivor Series needs to come back. Like you need to go back to those four staples because so it those special events on WWE Network don't feel like a Super Raw. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I'm, because, I'm, I'm well, hope, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, sorry. The only reason I say Survivor Series, mm-hmm. it's the 25th anniversary of Taker debuting. Oh, wow. So the story so, can be... So if Brock wants to end The Undertaker, end him for good, there's no better place to do that. End it where it and, all began. Wow. Yep, I can't wait for the Paul Heyman promos that hopefully still include singing. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, you know, uh, no, I, but generally, uh, other than that, I, I know Riz, you were with me with the Carlinses. Um, generally, I thought a very enjoyable show, top to bottom. I didn't really snooze on anything. T to B. What's that? T to B. T to B. T to B on the T to Bs. I didn't stick around for the pre-show or anything, <laughs> but um, I, I thought it was a, a fun, enjoyable show. I, I this is probably the the most enjoyable SummerSlam I feel like we've had in a long time. It it it, it was. And I think it was because, let's see, last year it was it was Cena Brock, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the year before that, that was Cena Bryan with uh, Randy Orton winning the match. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it kind of was like a better feeling of, oh, this is what a big pay-per-view should look like. A pay-per-view should look like. It was a solid card from top to bottom on paper, and then when they put it on the on the screen, it worked and it, it fit perfectly with what they wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Now, it's no NXT Takeover, which we'll discuss later, but it, it was they don't have to be NXT to survive. Mm-hmm. They can be WWE, and that's what they were. They were WWE. They they fit their strengths, mm-hmm. and they fit it well to, uh, on SummerSlam. And, and sometimes think- they don't. I think it go back to, I know the discussion is going to turn into, I, I've seen the tweets, what was the better show? Seriously, what show would you continue watching over this weekend and everything? And I really think they're, they're yeah, I say that, but I think they, they super serve an audience that's bigger. And if you want that, 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 the specific kind of wrestling, which is never going to be, I don't think, mainstream, um, that you have your choice now. And it's great that both can get re- represented on such a big stage over, over the single weekend. And I hope this is the trend. You know, we'll get into it, but I'm hoping WrestleMania is uh, we have NXT Takeover on Friday night, Hall of Fame, and then and then you know it becomes a four night stand wherever they go. Um, I, I think that could be a lot of fun. But anyways, uh, back to uh, we have we, questions from the chat. Uh, 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 LB, and then and then we'll get to these bits from the chat room. There was two things that I uh, I really wanted to point out um, because I uh, I was up in Cranberry because I. I sp- spend most of my Sundays um, with my D&D group mm-hmm. and um, a few of them have gotten interested enough in wrestling knowing that I uh, do the show to watch the pay-per-view so I was mainly with a non-wrestling crowd right mm-hmm. um, the two biggest reactions of the night I'm sorry the three biggest reactions of the night were in order number one New Day's uh, dancing when uh-huh. they won they everybody fucking loved that Number two, the Lucha Dragons. The, the, their hands-down favorite wrestling of the night was the Lucha Dragons. Uh, and number three, Seth Rollins' pants. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, were they uh, blue and black or white and gold? White and gold. And they did okay. say they look like X-Men pants, and I said if instead of white it was blue, then yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that New Day dance. No, New the, Day's the, on they. another level right now. Yes, they are. Absolutely. 
until they overdo it and we get bored of them. Uh, but I, I don't know. I think those guys have a lot of energy. A lot no, no. I don't think that'll happen. So no, no, no. They're going to get Zack Ryder levels of if they If they keep this up and then stay creative, stay entertaining, and stay energized, like literally, uh, I think mm-hmm. they're going to do great. Uh, from the chat room. can do that, too. Yeah. They're like the next Edge and Christian. Uh, Gabriel's in the in the chat room and he's asked some questions, so I want to uh, okay. touch on them. I'll be, uh, but he loves a new chat, by the way. I hope you guys dig that. I, I don't know if I'm under a free trial of some sort. I think we can only uh, have ten people in the chat room, but typically hasn't been a problem. Um, oh. But seriously, if we get Patreon supporters and there's more than ten people in the chat room, I will pay for the damn thing. It's just good. So. Uh, but anyways, uh, he's asking, LB, what are your thoughts on Cena losing? And it's a good point to touch on Jon Stewart and the whole situation there. What do you think? Should we should we all back away slowly from this? <laughs> yes, okay. Let's just, LB. I was, I, I was putting some thought into that uh, because I got a, a lot of people actually saying, hey, Jon Cena lost. Are you mad? Are you upset? Are you mad, bro? And no, I'm absolutely <laughs> not because Jon Cena had a – fucking incredible match Mm -hmm. with seth rollins john stewart got involved which was a lot of fun Mm -hmm. why would i be upset you know know, the ending the ending of a match the way the match ends who wins and who loses does not define the rest of the match and this isn't snarky either this is this is true Mm. We're, we're 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 john cena's match on at SummerSlam was incredible Mm -hmm. his past few matches were incredible. The entire United States title run, without with some hiccups, was incredible. Mm-hmm. This it, it was fun. I, yeah. I loved it. So when John, what they lost. When John Cena loses, when John Cena wins, it doesn't matter because his matches are that good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, it, it shouldn't matter. Right. I think my favorite part about that match was we've seen a lot of people like impersonate John Cena moves and all that stuff like Kevin Owens most recently. But when Rollins did the roll through and then picked up John Cena, like Mm -hmm. Cena does to win almost every big match. That was absolutely amazing because I don't think anyone's ever done that before. CrossFit Jesus. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Also from the chat, Gabriel was asking, uh, uh, he says to Mad Mike actually, since we mentioned it a little bit earlier, he's like seriously. Taker versus Brock had the best storytelling in a match in years, and I and I agree with that. I, I think generally it did. I I don't think it had the best storytelling on that show. It was personally. very it was very good though. Come on, it was very it was, good. Oh no, it was that was the match they wanted to have at Mania. It was yes. Like, like if Taker hadn't gotten concussed, I'm pretty sure that's the exact that is the <laughs> exact match and finish they would have had at Mania. I firmly believe that. Like, I think Taker would have won by a fluke thing like that at Mania if he hadn't gotten concussed or whatever. I, hmm. I really honestly think that. Or Brock would have won barely. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, because I think something as big as him losing the streak would have been, like, I think that would have been preconceived regardless of his condition. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, that's that's a that's the story that they tell. right 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 right. I, I, but but story wise, a similar finish. Okay, like, okay, like it, like maybe reverse it, like where Brock is tapping and the ref doesn't see it, and then Taker calls it off, and then Taker turns around to an F five instead of Brock turning around to a tombstone or whatever. The know, it, it, then again, Vince just said it was my call to to end it when they did the interview on the Stone Cold podcast. Well, so maybe that was his call in the earpiece. Yeah. So mm-hmm. maybe it was like this was going to work. Let's just end it, <laughs> you know, um, which could be interesting. But there you go. Uh, so I don't know. I, I think it was a fun SummerSlam. I think it was one we're going to look back fondly because I know I was looking through SummerSlams to watch, and I had to go back about ten years before I saw saw one I thought was memorable enough to pull back up. Okay. Nineteen ninety four. Oh yeah. Ninety eight was really good too. Ninety eight was one. Of, it was the one that got me back. Oh, WWE. The, 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 the ninety eight was my first WWF pay per view. 1994 so. Undertaker Undertaker Can I Actually can, uh, SummerSlam uh, 2002 Is also The shit Which one is I it? Lo- that's uh, Shawn Michaels returning mm. Rock versus Brock It opened with a hot match Of Angle and, and Mysterio There wow. was a lot of good stuff On that show Wow um, so, uh, actually there was a post, uh, let's see if I can pull it up here. It wasn't a, she actually just posted her, It wasn't on the mayhem show or anything, but you guys may, may re- remember a mayhem Missy that used to be on this show. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I just, no, 
No, no, just she dead to no. you too. She's only the reason that we say good times. Yeah, yeah, she only like started the trend. But uh, she had this great thing. I, I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this on here. Uh, but uh, there, there's this awesome. She apparently uh, this was the 20 year anniversary of her family watching WWF pay per views together, uh, celebrated from 1995 SummerSlam, which is I believe the same one that Finn Balor watches while he, he plays with Legos. Um, uh-huh. So they had like an old school wrestling party. They had old WWF magazines out. They had these little like uh, toothpick wrestling guys like in in all their goodies and and I don't know is that a is that a WWE Championship cake of some sort over there uh, or no those are plates aren't they. Uh, but, uh, mm-hmm. so, so I, I thought that was really cool, uh, that, that, that was happening. Um, and, and that made me kind of think about, uh, you know, what was your first pay-per-view and everything? Maybe that'll be a big question or something later on down the line or something you guys can actually, I'll put in the group, you know, what was your first pay-per-view? Uh, but, but uh, kind of a cool kind of throwback on, on SummerSlam there. So, all right. And all sort before yeah. we move on from SummerSlam, we have to mention Steven goddamn Amel. He was oh awesome. geez, yes, yes. He was um, awesome. Uh, Matt Carlin's uh, on that. Mar- Matt Carlin's uh, uh, said said something during the party about how uh, Stephen Amell said in an interview that his dream was to play the Ricky Morton part of a match, mm-hmm. uh, where yeah. he's the guy that gets beat down and everything. Uh, he was in the match more than Neville. Easily. He was in the match more than Stardust. He was. He was. <laughs> he was getting beat down by the biggest guy there. So, yeah. um, I you can't discount anything he did. He looked good. He kind of his stance was a little weird though. Like he didn't know what to do with I his think body. He, I think he was a little nervous. Like, yeah. He didn't oh, know certainly. What to do with his hands. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like like he just kind of like stood there and it's like, but he's other than that, like his motions were good and 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 everything else. And he did the flip and everything. I think he out uh, Hugh Jackman this thing, uh, and I hope we see him again. Honestly, I, I really I, hope we do. I, I loved that he grabbed the tag rope before he was tagged into the match. Yep, yep. Yes, I, I noticed that too. <laughs> yeah. And, but the thing about it is, and I'm super excited about this, the decision involved Barrett and Neville, mm-hmm. not Amel nor Stardust. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, once Arrow finishes rapping, WrestleMania, Stardust, Stardust versus Arrow one-on-one. Oh, wow. I I'd love it. it. I I'd could love absolutely it. see it, especially he had what three weeks to train for this one. If he can train after <laughs> Arrow's done filming and around the time Ninja Turtles Two is coming out, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think he got set. That is fun. Hey, any other, you guys have any thoughts on uh, Stephen Amell? Uh, he was good. I mean, mm-hmm. um, I, I honestly, uh, I, I said this in the in at the party as well. Um, the I didn't know like if if you pointed if you set set up a lineup and said which one Stephen and Mel before SummerSlam, I would have zero clue because I don't watch CW, I don't watch Arrow, I don't watch The Flash, I don't watch any of that because, it, eh, I mean I I probably should but it but he did surprise me a lot about what he did. Because I had zero intent on interest in the match, but after a while, I started to get interested in the match, which is what I wanted to happen. So it was, it was good. It was a good, was a good celebrity celebrity spot, and a really good a celebrity spot, uh, better than Aki Bono and uh, Floyd May- Mayweather combined. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about you? Uh, come on, the comic book guy has to have some thoughts on Stephen Amell. The arrow. I thought he did a really good job. Um, it uh, it really kind of hammered home, like you said. He looked a little awkward. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he hasn't been wrestling for basically his entire life, like everybody else in that ring had. Um, and it really kind of hammered home how fluid and how natural these guys are mm-hmm. uh, in comparison to a civilian. Basically, I thought as in, in regards to uh, being a celebrity in the WWE, he did a fantastic job. Uh, he did the dive off the top rope, which was great. Uh, he sold everything like a champ. Mm-hmm. Um, and I agree that it was left open ended, and I hope they do more with it. His Excellent. enziguri was awesome, too. Oh, yeah, the enziguri that made yeah. me real happy. Yeah, the like the enziguri, I'm like, oh, okay, he, he's really going for it. That, that, was, mm-hmm. that was good. 
<laughs> All right. Well, on that note, we're going to talk about NXT TakeOver in a moment. But uh, in the meantime, hey, check out IndieWrestling.us. This is a new site by Sorgatron Media. It's uh, where you can get your digital download and DVD orders for the International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, Vicious Outcast Wrestling, and such projects as The Legend of Virgil and his traveling merchandise table. It's all right there at your fingertips. He's on it. The Riz is on the Virgil DVD. You should go get it. The digital download right there. It's only $16 for a two-disc, four-hour-plus extravaganza of Virgilness. There's a fact check going on. There is a sure. fact check going during it. I know. I edited the damn thing, Riz. But you can also pick really? up right now. You can check out Cage Fury 2015. So much great stuff happened at Cage Fury. Uh, there's videos right now. If you go to Inter uh, I'm sorry, uh, International Wrestling Cartel's Facebook page, there's videos of our friend of the show, Jock Sansom, uh, Samson, about dying, uh, going over the top rope. Uh, almost there's killing somebody Almost in the killing, killing somebody in the process, exactly. Uh, it was an insane. This is why we love independent pro wrestling. Wrestling. Of course, Tommy Dreamer was a part of it. Rhino, that guy from NXT, is now the IWC Heavyweight Champion. So Spoiler much good alert. stuff. What's that? Spoiler alert, Sorg. S Spoiler alert. We put it on the YouTubes. I don't think it's 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 such a I spoiler mean, anymore, buddy. Uh, but what if somebody didn't want to watch the YouTube, maybe they wanted well, to buy you know a what? DVD. And you know what, Riz? Let me promote my stuff. US. Let me promote my stuff, and let me show you Jock Sansom about dying at an indie wrestling <laughs> show. Oh, this got weird. I was I was there, Sorg. You were there. Let me show the people all the craziness if they're on video. Oh, oh it's so crazy. Look at that. Well, let's 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 see it again for the video people. There he goes, fly Jock Sampson, fly right into the first row. So there you go. Um, uh, check that out. So much more at indiewrestling.us and on the Facebook page. We're sharing those videos as well. Follow us on the Twitters. Follow us on the Instagrams. Exclusive sales and offers um, all across on different stuff. You might get a different sale if you're on Instagram. You might get a different sale if you're on Twitter in the near future. And we're having a lot of fun and just really kind of spreading the word of indie independent pro wrestling over on that account so please go check them out and enjoy that and support the show by supporting that site and support indie wrestling so let's get into something that's almost indie wrestling almost as exciting as, as indie wrestling more so maybe at some point it's nxt takeover brooklyn's finest for sure i think i spelled brooklyn there's a y in brooklyn isn't there uh yes, yes. i think i screwed that up L-Y-N. Leave, L -Y -N. It. leave, leave, it, leave it. No, no, we're not going to leave that. I'm still getting heat from when I uh, misspelled uh, uh, Britt Baker's uh, Twitter the, a couple weeks ago. So, well, this one goes to, the floor goes to, uh, even though most of us watch it on TV, but somebody experienced it in person as he has the B Bailey swag to prove it. Uh, so NXT TakeOver, Impressions Live, Mad Mike. All right. Um, without hyperbole, I think... This might be the n either the best or the second best wrestling show I've ever been through. Um, it, it it was from top to like from top to bottom. It was fantastic. Uh, they show we recorded T to B. They recorded uh, this Wednesday's NXT before mm -hmm. Takeover started. Yeah. So uh, I won't spoil anything here. We'll save that for uh, midweek war when it goes on. Because I'm curious to see how a lot of that stuff translates. Because there were there were some interesting things going on. We, we had an Eva Marie match. Um, the crowd enjoyed that one. Uh, the show started with Enzo and Cass, which was the perfect way to open the entire night. Because... Uh, I posted a video a uh, YouTube on uh, the Mayhem's on the Mayhem Show's YouTube of Enzo and Cass's entrance, and they owned the whole stadium. Like there, there were Enzo and Cass chants. There were chants for "How are you doing?" before we even got in the building. Um, as far as the actual show goes, uh, Tri Triple H came out about ten minutes before or five ten minutes before the show was starting. And he wanted everyone in the arena to be as quiet as possible so he could do his uh, his cool little intro with the single spotlight over him. And then he raised his arms so, the whole, uh, so all the lights are on. You could see the entire crowd. Uh, for the most part, it sounded like he came off pretty good. I know we were quiet during it the whole time. Um, everything, about the, like, everything about the show was on point. Uh, everyone loved Apollo Crews. Tyler Breeze's entrance was phenomenal he did a sightseeing tour in new york city which was great um 
obviously the Bailey Sasha match was ridiculous. Um, then the curtain call afterwards with the four horse woman was awesome. Uh, Balor and Owens was great. J- just everything about it was really, really well done, well put together. Uh, it, it, the, the thing that I noticed, and um, I think it's because of where we were sitting. The uh, We were saying hard camera side. So um, we saw the first row on the opposite side where the, where like the production usually is. Mm-hmm. And that's where Zack Ryder's father was sitting. He was sitting there for Zach's match. He would, um, Mojo's you're, you're talking like the first, match. like the first first row, or like the first first row. Okay, like um, uh, it's a blink and you miss a moment. But when Kevin Owens came out, his wife and kid were in front, were in the front row. Oh, that's awesome. And Bailey, like, there's a shot where Bailey is looking at her mom and dad, at her mom and dad. Or her mom and her brother, or whatever, whoever was there, I forget. Um, but they were front row, just staring at her, and like while she was trying to get out of the bank statement, mm-hmm. it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing, and it's something you don't really get being hard camera side because they're showing the crowd from the other end. But um, the other thing that was interesting, and I don't know if this is because it's the first time they're in a big arena, but there was a referee. On the floor, um, opposite hard camera side, that was kind of telling them when to like pose and stuff, like when the replays were done. Yeah, and it's kind of like it was kind of like a teaching moment too, because it, it's not something you notice if you're just watching the in ring stuff. But right. at that point, it was all like about taunts and entrances and everything like that. And I just thought it was like the there was a referee that was almost acting as a director. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was really, really cool. I, 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 as you know, Mike, when I go, I barely watch the show typically, like on Raw and stuff. And right. uh, I, I, what I've always noticed was, especially when they're on the ramp, uh, I'll see a, a signal from the camera guy in front of them, like I'll, you mm-hmm. know, go or stop, you know, like just a little bit, or you know, or, or turn. So like you know, you, you come back from the thing and they're on the ramp and they're turn around, and look at the guy or something. Like they're they're getting signals from that, right? Uh, as much as they can, or maybe they're not seeing the screen to see their cue or something like that. So, um, and yeah, I think it does happen more often than not. Um, now, it's very that's very interesting because typically, it, was the ref in the ring? Like, was there no ref in the ring when that happened? Because it was like after the match. Oh no, uh, it was it was the ref that was in the ring during the match. But he this was all out. This was all post match stuff, like mm-hmm. all the celebrations and everything. Mm-hmm. So he was outside the ring, right? Because I mean, I noticed. I don't know if I'm just at that point, but I I, I noticed like the you know even them getting whispered to after they've won and maybe during a hand raise or before or something like that. And, and yeah, you know, I kind of look at it like, Oh, they're telling them to make sure to turn this way or, or, or camera over here or something like that. You know what I mean? Or, yeah. or make this quick time short, you know, do your post quick, you know, or wait for this, you know? Um, I, I think it's interesting. It, 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 and, and to see those little cues, if they're doing it right, you don't notice it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a part of a referee's job to be honest. So, Cool. It's cool. And maybe it is. So you think it's more prevalent because there are newer people still? I think so, because I, I, I noticed in the first match that mm-hmm. um, the winners of the match, I'm not going to say who, um, were looking a lot at the big screen to see when the replays ended. Mm-hmm. Which you notice on so Raw, I, too. Yeah. But I, I, think, I think that's kind of why they tried to nip that in the bud a little bit, because... You know, it's it's all a matter of editing and everything like that. But right. it was still just really kind of cool to pick up on things like that. And it was all post-match. I mean, everything in the ring was pretty much fine. Mm-hmm. There was one match that I think had a botched ending. Mm-hmm. Um, so right. uh, it was the Divas Fatal 4-Way match. Right, right. You mentioned that before, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays on the show. I'm actually very curious to see what they do with that mm-hmm. but uh yeah uh, i mean it was there wasn't a bad match on the card and yes i'm including eva marie versus carmella in that mm-hmm. their match was fine it wasn't stellar by any stretch of the imagination but and, and we got to see liger yeah how was that how was L- liger 
Liger to me is like a mythical beast. Yeah, I, um, I, I, I gotta then, say, I'm super jealous that you got to see Liger in person. Yeah, yeah. L- Liger was amazing. Uh, there was a Liger's Gorgeous chant started, <laughs> which which was fun. Oh, and goddamn Blue Pants. Blue Pants. Blue Pants was maybe the most over person mm-hmm. at the show, not mm-hmm. named Enzo Amore. I believe yeah, it. I'm, be, I'm being completely serious about that <laughs> because we started chanting for Blue Pants in the Buffalo Wild Wings I was at before <laughs> the show. Because NXT plus Bru- plus Brooklyn SummerSlam WrestleMania ish crowd equals that. So, mm-hmm. although it was really funny at uh, the Buffalo Wild Wings, mm-hmm. I just randomly screamed out Sasha's Ratchet, mm-hmm. and I got about twenty people screaming, "No, she's not!" So. That, that's when you knew you were in the right Buffalo Wild Wings for a pre-show crowd. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Anything else? Any other takeaways from that before we get into everybody else's thoughts for that watch just on a, on a TV set? Um, well, I do have one more thing, Sorg. Friend of the show, <gasps> Elias Sampson <gasps> made his debut as the Drifter, <gasps> and he is on the back of my shirt. <laughs> how did he get there? And how has he held on for so long? Because he's a drifter, Sorg. Hmm. <laughs> That's what they do. They hang on for long stretches amounts of time. <laughs> but yeah, he came out with an acoustic guitar and everything, and uh, he, had, he had a good match. He had a good match, too, so it was a lot of fun. Good. He good. wrestled um, Bull Dempsey. Cool. Yeah. Cool. It, it, was, it, was, it was an amazing show. If if NXT ever comes to your area, I highly recommend going. And that's the thing. I've heard recommend. amazing, amazing things from, from uh, NXT shows that are simply house shows. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, especially the one in Pittsburgh. I know a few people that went down to that, for instance. So, all right. With that, so so for everybody else to watch. So, Riz, you watched it the old school um, over a TV way. Uh, yes. what, was your, what were your thoughts on, on, on TakeOver? Uh, uh, um, 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 great or greatest? My my first thought was holy shit, mm-hmm. um, but but to answer your question, it was probably one of the best one of the best uh, NXT live pay per views they had. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I think it had a lot to do with that crowd. No, and and no offense to Full Sail, which puts on an amazing production, uh, but. To have that in that big of an uh, of an arena and sell it out with fans that are that crazy, and then put on a show with that awesome of talent, it was it, it was it was awesome. We had Samoa Joe in his one of his best matches in ten years, maybe nine years, or eight, uh, but. But he he had it with a guy who we've had many discussions about mm-hmm. being very bland and very not good at wrestling, and he was very good at, at making him look good. He he needs to use that heel hook more. Yes, that heel hook was fantastic. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of stuff I want to see him doing, as opposed to just doing the end of days over and over again. Oh, and. Uh, just, just so you know, all going off topic. I was just spoiling it for Tough Enough, so I'm fine. The WWE just spoiled Tough Enough for me. Um, <laughs> going back to the topic, by the way, I'm very stretchy on this computer. Um, Sorry. The, uh, everything in that match, top T to B, was amazing. <laughs> I love this new phrase. By the way, title of the show, T and B. T to B. Um, it just seemed like nothing was out of place besides maybe a few things. But other than that, the ladder match was amazing. Uh, of course it was. It was Finn Balor and fucking Kevin Owens. I, I think they screwed up the finish of that match, though. I, I think the finish – I think um, when Owens fell off the ladder onto the other ladder, I think he was supposed to stay there and get the coup de gras on that. <laughs> But because he bounced and he fell off, like, I I don't, because I didn't actually get to finish watching the network version of it, but Owens had to literally roll all the way to the center <laughs> of the ring. 
was, it was even kinda... even like, like you said, even that they they adjusted to make it look like it's supposed to happen, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which is something that we've we've seen in WWE not do from time to time. It was just ah oh, shit, just pin them. <laughs> uh, but now it's, it's actually okay. We're gonna do this. We're gonna move them over here. You're gonna you're gonna we're gonna roll. I'm gonna roll over here. You hit me with that because I'm gonna bounce off this gigantic ladder. Um, and by the way, I think somebody else mentioned this. Finn Balor. We, we got we got a Finn Balor entrance in a huge arena. Something that we wanted from mm-hmm. day one when we saw mm-hmm. when yeah, he did. It was so amazing. Oh. They didn't disappoint either. No. They had like, and um, I'm not sure what you what you guys thought of it, but I I like when they started filling the arena of smoke. I saw someone crawling down, and I'm like, oh, that's Finn. And I'm like, wait, no, that's not. They just have doubles. <laughs> they had doubles popping up through the smoke. So it was oh. really it was I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah. like he was teleporting. They had <laughs> they had three guys. They had Finn and two guys that had similar body shapes to him. So it was really, really cool the way they did it. Yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of took a second. We're like, wait, is this a different angle? No, wait, that's the same yeah. camera. You know, it, like it took like till like the second or third time we were like, you kind of figured out what was happening, uh, which was really cool. I can't wait till uh, a year from now during a a documentary we find out what star of the future was the other uh, uh, Finn Balor's. You know, I bet one of them was Ty Dillinger. You think one was Ty? It's always I, Ty I, Dillinger, I, I isn't really it? I really think so. <laughs> it, was, it was probably you know it was probably Sasha Banks and Charlotte. They it's just always. in the back, you know. It's always um, considering one of them. The one I saw was topless. It was definitely not Sasha Banks and Charlotte. Uh, I don't know about that. I, no. I would have. I would have reported on that. Yeah. Or, or you know what? It might have been Bram, anyways. So fantastic <laughs> show. So, so what do we think? Like NXT t- is this? Where does NXT go from here? Do England. anywhere? England. <laughs> They just do like like I mean I I I I'm watching this thing and two or three times during this thing I'm looking at this what was it fourteen thousand plus that, that that filled the arena for this thing sold uh, out to release close, more tickets close to sixteen thousand I thought they said sixteen thousand they yeah. sold out sixteen thousand um they're not doing two thousand seat arenas anymore when they do house shows I, there's no way they are uh, uh I think they I think they will you think they will just to keep the scarcity mm-hmm. just to make it special um okay yeah. okay I, I, maybe um. They, they filled a house show at the end of the day. They filled mm-hmm. sixteen thousand in an arena from a show that everybody has to pay nine ninety nine to see. Uh, well, mostly, mostly you can get it other places. You get it on Hulu. Maybe you get it locally still down in Florida, but still that's Florida, right? Uh, you got to pay seven ninety nine or nine ninety nine to watch this program and get into it, right? And to enough to pay twenty bucks up for uh, uh the a seat in this on the show that was basically a pay-per-view that is amazing that is screw you networks we don't need you look what we just did with not even a name on here not a single what name on here and, and yeah okay jushin thunder liger samoa joe sure but not a proven headlining SummerSlam name not a brock lesnar not a john cena not a even a seth rollins right uh mm-hmm. to speak of here and they filled that arena and yes, yeah, the SummerSlam I think it also helped that the tickets were pretty modestly priced. Were they? Well, I, I think they. Yeah, they didn't want to overextend for something like that. This is an unproven yeah. commodity for whatever we think of it. To WWE brass, this is an unproven commodity. But now they've done this. I, I love. I love Triple H's show me mentality with this because he's building it and building it and building it to the point where at some point, no, like whatever, whatever. whatever corporate thing is keeping them down and not talking about them on Monday Night Raw can't refute this at a certain point. Um, when, when it, like, I imagine there is some point where NXT could make more money or could make bigger impact than Monday Night Raw and then what happens? You know, you know what? Uh, the announcement they made during TakeOver uh, I, be- I believe will probably come close to doing that the uh the dusty invitational tag Mm -hmm. tournament Mm -hmm. yeah it's going to be star-studded and it didn't say it was 
just going to be WWE superstars. And we know NXT has gone beyond the WWE talent pool to reach for their stars. Because you got Jushin Thunder Liger, you have uh, Samoa Joe coming in. I believe I saw Okada up, the, up at Wrestle up at SummerSlam with with Samoa Joe, so he's probably going to be that that tag match is going to be huge. And also, you got the Dudleys back; they're mm-hmm. probably back Dudleys, for yeah. that. And I have a feeling the Dudleys aren't going to be the only ones we see. No, they're oh, not. Yeah, no, definitely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. On, on that level, I mean, right? So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Head, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Hangers are going to be there. The outlaws. <laughs> I, I would almost Techno guarantee. Thousand. I would almost guarantee the outlaws are in that. Marty um, Jannetty's probably going to show up somehow. Lunda and Kendrick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd love Maybe to see even Dreamer and, and Rhino. Here. Dreamer and Rhino would be good too. Mm-hmm. We're already starting to book this. Holy but God. yeah, um, I gotta say when I because I was walking around uh, Manhattan before I went down to Brooklyn on Saturday. I saw so many NXT shirts, like, and I didn't see a single John Cena shirt. I didn't see a Roman Reigns shirt. I didn't even see Brock Lesnar shirts. I saw only strictly NXT shirts. Can I put a side note? This has nothing to do with anything we're talking about, but I popped a little bit when I was watching Swerve that premiered last night, and there was a Lucha Underground shirt behind the Hornswoggle eating competition. (laughs) Just want to put that out there. That was kind of cool. Oh, there's that. All right. So NXT was awesome. And, and I know you guys are going to talk about, I don't know, are you going to talk about this along with the most recent episode this week, probably? Um, or how you guys do anything special for Midweek War? Or is this basically a discussion? We'll probably, we'll probably discuss you, you, it. But it'll be, it'll oh, be and, part of the conversation. And Sorg, I got to play the WrestleMania pinball game. Ooh. They have it for free at the Toys R Us in Times Square. Nice. It's fun. It's super fun. <laughs> All right, I have to keep an eye out. Hopefully, they get one for uh, the Coin Op uh, Hall of Fame up here, right? So yeah. I know, hey, you know, those go, the Pro Wrestling News and Views guys, they have some like the Royal Rumble one and everything. I guess they work on pinball machines down there. But man, we got to get them on the show. Yeah, it's a cool group of guys, and they're really freaking into it. And they got a lot of history with uh, wrestling. So, anyways, uh, for those who don't know, Pro Wrestling News and Views, I think you can find them on Facebook. Last I knew, they didn't have much of a web presence. Uh, they actually, one of those kind of cable access y kind of shows. Uh, that's actually around like Armstrong Cable in the greater, uh, not in Pittsburgh, but around Pittsburgh area. So, uh, but they they have they've interviewed like just about any name big over the last like thirty years. It's it's crazy, but um, real cool guys. Um, but anyways, uh, hey, uh, check out. Speaking of real cool guys, check out our friends down at Slice on Broadway. Uh, they're down here. If you are in the Pittsburgh area, and I know not everybody is, but if you are, I have to give a shout out because they support the Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. As usual, our guests that come down here through the night, sometimes we got somebody on the couch here for Wrestling Mayhem Show. A lot of times we have somebody for the Awesome Cast, for Boss Battle, for Awesome Chat, maybe for the Indie Mayhem Show later on, uh, as we had like Br- Breaker uh, on the show a few weeks ago. Uh, guys like Andrew Palace here in the studio check, uh, hanging with us, and uh, we want to make sure we feed these guys. Maybe it's not great to feed wrestlers pizza since they're maybe on a little tighter of a, a regimen but sometimes you never know you never know i, I just watched a wrestler put a, put away a lot of wings last week so maybe it's okay uh <laughs> but anyways um you can hear about that on the wrestling mayhem show gold what that was about but anyways uh go check out uh, check out our friends slice on broadway.com like i said they're here in the south hills of pittsburgh and they're uh, uh putting together some really good stuff here's the tip of the week go ask for the gonzo pizza not on the menu but delicious. You don't be afraid of the word goat cheese. That's my tip for you this week. Okay, oh. that's my life t- tip for you. It is some good freaking stuff. Okay. So, so did they respond to your pizza emoji tweet yet? I can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> what was it? What did I say? I was just like a bunch of pizza emojis, and, and I was like, "How does this make you feel?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, no, I didn't notice a response, but I might have just not seen it. So, uh, but so go check them out. Check out our friends, sliceonbroadway.com, BJH underscore slice on the Twitters, and slice on Broadway on Facebook and Instagram. And let them know you heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem show, and you want to know what the heck a Gonzo is. Uh, so, with that, let's see what happened last week on the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network, and we'll be right back with the big question. First thing I see right off the bat is uh, the Red Pirate Rogers, which is. <laughs> the homage to uh, Princess Bride which is probably one of my favorite movies and I was like oh this is awesome because it's <laughs> the 80s I, I struggle with the term you know the, the social media expert term because mm-hmm. I think we're all learning all the time and 
And I think that's the best part about it. I learned that we almost fought over how to use Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> and You're like, exactly, the kids are using I'm it. I'm trying like, no, not to. What would it take to make you stop watching pro wrestling? What path does an NXT superstar need to take to succeed on the main roster? What went wrong with Roman Reigns and how can it be fixed? What <laughs> would we have the same Royal Rumble backlash if not for Daniel Bryan? If you could bring anyone in to run the WWE, who would it be? What should the WWE give up for Lent? Is the WWE Hall of Fame sustainable? What do the Divas need? More match time or better storylines? Is there a place for the kind of training that got Bill DeMott in trouble? What is your WWE Hall of Fame criteria? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Check out that last week in Sorgatron Media. Fun times, as always, all across. We got your geekery covered, ladies and gentlemen. So let's kick it over to our good friend Papa Lunchbox with the big question. Good to have you again. So you can tickle our, our brain bones. Let us know, brain LB, bones. what is your big question? I do love a good brain bone. Um, I, I was kind of hoping that we'd have uh, Matt Carlin's on for this since he's mm-hmm. been the most... Uh, uh, Vocal, uh, in 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 uh, oh, crap. regards oh, crap. to this. So you uh, know what? Subject, but... Hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what? If he's Hashtag around, if he's around, can somebody invite him? I'll break uh, the rule we... just for the moment for five minutes and and bring him in if he's available. Okay, he might we be working have an tonight. Email from him. You do have an email from him, so he's we, probably we busy. Have... Oh wait, yeah, is it? We have an email. All right, go ahead with the big question. Sorry. Okay, um, so uh, so John Cena. Had his match at uh, SummerSlam. Mm. Um, there has been a uh, uh, vocal section of people who don't like John Cena. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt Carlin's has been one of them. We kind of butted heads a few weeks ago uh, here on the show. Poor John. Uh, as to the uh, the and problems Jen is with still John Cena. Very very scarred by that, by the way. Right, right. Yeah, that'd be fine. Um, <laughs> so m- my question this week is, and. Uh, uh, Maybe we'll do a, a flip side of this, but frankly, this is my big question, so I can ask whatever question I want. Um, it's easy to run down John Cena. It's shtick. You just regurgitate the same thing that everyone else has been saying again and again on the internet. Oh, his cargo shorts. Oh, Cena wins, lol. All of that. Let's take a cue from the Power Hour. Let's be positive. What do you love? About John Cena. <laughs> I can start. Uh, I can. I can go all day. You want to know what I love about John Cena? Hmm. He's amazing. He never stops working. He never stops trying to get better. He works hard to put. Uh, put. He puts effort into his matches. He makes. Every single one of his opponents look good, mm-hmm. and just because he wins matches doesn't mean that his opponents look bad at the end of them. You know, I, I, I'm not. This is going to be. This is not going to be my answer. I just want to take off on that. So uh, we Can were talking. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It sounded like an I, I just. I, I'm sorry. I just wanted to say he's he's good. He's a good wrestler. He's entertaining. He's good for the business as a whole, and you can't say that about very many people. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I apologize. I I, uh, I I I apparently misinterpreted a dramatic pause for end of set <laughs> end of point. So so, but anyways, uh, the point. Uh, yeah, I was I was apologizing so much in my head. I didn't listen to your last part there. So I hope I didn't run <laughs> over. Um, but you know, I I I listen as we talked about in some other podcasts. Like you know, guys like Gary Vaynerchuk about working hard and not working the next guy and everything like that. I would love that guy to meet John Cena. Because mm-hmm. I feel like that is definitely a correlation there, um, you know. As we say, and I think illustrated very well in some of the documentaries they've done on him and everything too. Um, so I don't, that was my only kind of side thought on that part. So, but. all right, I, I, I have mine. Okay, I like John Cena the person. <laughs> no, I'm se- no, yeah. I'm serious. I'm serious because uh-huh. I'm separating it from John Cena the performer, John Cena the character. Right, right, right. Um, right. I've, I've talked about this before. John Cena the person seems like one of the most genuine human beings that they've had in WWE. Um, everyone I've talked to that's met him has said nothing but nice things about him. Uh, he just celebrated his 500th Make-A-Wish this mm. weekend in New York. Uh, they had a big thing for that. 
he's he's hilarious on Total Divas. Again, I don't know how much of that is shtick and how much of that is just he doesn't want to be on a reality show. Um, but John Cena, the person, seems like a really great guy, a big wrestling fan who loves what he does, and you can't really hate on that. I think um, I wish more of that would go into John Cena, the character, because I think John Cena, the character, seems sometimes almost too polished, like almost too protecting the shield, like the WWE shield. Like it, it just seems very trained. And I, I know that's what you want your big star to be. But I think if you bring more of John Cena, the man into like when John Cena, the man influences John Cena, the characters promos, those are usually his best promos. And I think I'd rather see more of that as opposed to a guy giving John Stewart an AA just because he's the face. Okay. 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 Um, mine's kind of going along with you guys on this one. Uh, as a performer, he has done this for what? 15 years now. Mm-hmm. Straight as an arrow. And the, the fact that there, there is a whole crowd chanting John Cena sucks at him. He has his own goals in mind and wants you to change with him. And he and nine, nine times out of ten, he has. Uh, probably if you asked me about this two years ago, I would probably say a snarky little answer like, oh, he's – Jeans are cool, but <laughs> but as as the age goes by, as he goes by, you get more Cena, you get more his style, you get more adaptations, and you get more of him adding more stuff to his repertoire, and not even moves, just aneurysm and aneurysm. Fuck aneurysm. Um, what? <laughs> well, that escalated. That, wow. I uh, know. Like like. Mannerisms. That's what I was talking about. Mannerisms. Mannerisms. Well, yeah. To be fair, an aneurysm could be a mannerism. So, true. Uh, okay. I just had one. Um, uh, <laughs> but, but also, you, you have to take into account that, like Mad Mike said, he is an amazing man for having 500, 500 make wishes. Like, Hulk Hogan wouldn't do that. Bret Hart, as much as I like him, wouldn't do that. Shawn Michaels wouldn't do that. The Rock wouldn't do that. Big Show might, even though nobody wants to see him. Uh, Taker wouldn't do that. No, none of the big stars today or any other day past would have done would do, would do put much time in to making the WWE brand what it is than John Cena. All right, Ooh, I like sweet. it. I like it. What do I like about John Cena? I still listen to his ra- his rap album. <laughs> oh, his rap album is really surprisingly it's actually good. actually pretty good. Way better than Shaq Fu. Um, or, no, that was Shaq. the game. Way, way better than Shaq Diesel. Shaq, yeah, Shaq Sorg, Diesel. Sorg. Mad Mike fact, Shaq Diesel was the first CD I ever bought. Mm. Gratefully regretted it. But yeah, mm. Cena's rap album is actually really great. I have. Yeah, I still, let's um, say, now, now let's say a, a good thing about Bumpy Knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> what do you love about Bumpy Knuckles? He popped up I on some other album. It was a bad, bad, man. <laughs> it's a bad, bad, bad. Dude, the 18 Bad, Bad Man video is amazing. <laughs> Oh jeez, such a it, it was it was a good. I mean, there's some stuff on there that I'm like, wow, that beat is not very good. You know, I mean, there's there's some rough stuff on there. You know, oh, slow and, jam, the slow jam. If you ever wanted to hear jams. John Cena say "fuck," <laughs> get that rap album because there's a song called "Don't Want to Fuck with Us." He did so. a sm- a smattering of live shows, live performances, and. Uh, I don't know, man. I, like, I, like it was like they had one at Peabody's in uh, in Cleveland, and I have friends that have performed at Peabody's in Cleveland. Um, also, AIW says "fuck Peabody's in Cleveland," specifically <laughs> friend of the show, Sorg, Pedro. Sorg, I'm predicting in ten years, 
John Cena and Bumpy Knuckles will reunite at the Gathering of the Juggalos. Oh, wouldn't that be so amazing? <laughs> what about Trademark? I would love it. Oh, Trade, trademark. Trademark, trademark the truth. Come on, Trademark wow. the truth. That's 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 the that's the shit right there. We um, we just made, we just did the entire chain gang in mm-hmm. one day. Chain gang is the click. Chain gang is the click. Man, we should just change our theme song to that right off the way. Hold on a second. Oh yeah. Wait, are we gonna? Get oh, they don't know what's going on. Pulled from YouTube. Oh, there it goes. Oh no. Yeah, he did it now. Gotta put it in the vault. They don't know what's coming. They don't know what's coming. What's coming? This is we're doing this. I like how B's the only one no selling this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's because I listened to that shit this morning. So. <laughs> Respect it. Honestly, Listen, when you wake up with a boner, you have to get it off somehow. <laughs> and this video is the perfect solution. My my favorite song on that whole album is Right Now. And it's like the least hardcore of his tracks. Oh, it's like a one. very mellow tune, but it's got a good beat to it. I don't know. Every song is listed twice in um in Apple Music apparently for some reason. I don't get why. Probably clean one, and dirty. Yeah, clean and dirty. Clean and dirty. Oh, you're right. You're right. There probably is. Yeah, like don't f with us. Yep. So, don't wanna fuck with us. Don't wanna fuck with us. I mean, that was my anthem for a bit. Come on, you know the rep. <laughs> you know, I actually wanted to. I never bought the album, so. Um, but uh, I tried to, and I couldn't find it anywhere. I think I actually did buy it. That might I be. I, that might be album. actually one of the last CDs I bought. <laughs> And also, fun fact, uh, the, it, which was kind of mimicked because I also wanted to buy WrestleMania, the album, back in the day. Also couldn't find it anywhere. So, But I'm from like a small town, so they're not going to have anything other than the big stuff, even at the actual record store we had. So, I don't know. So, don't what's, know a what, what, what's a record? Record. <clears throat> a record okay. store. It's a record. A record. A I think record you know it as an it. FYE uh, now. Oh. Oh, oh, they closed down already. National though. Record right. Mart, M- NRM, <laughs> NRM. Sam Goody. Sam Goody. Sam a, Goody. A media play. Media play. So, what do you what do you guys like about what do you guys love about John Cena? <laughs> we have, actually yeah, have some stuff from the chat room. We have some stuff from the chat room, and thank you for. Oh, geez, somebody just sent me the greatest Bash of the Beast gif. It's Slim Jim and Macho Man right now. Oh, because somebody's at the beach right now. Oh, this is so amazing. I wish I could put, throw it over in the chat room. Uh, Gabriel, uh, who uh, out, out there in, in Portland, by the way, Portland, West Coaster. Um, Portlandia. Uh, yes. I love that he puts his uh, job ahead of everything, wrestling, mentoring, make a wish, etc. He does what is asked and is exceptional at it. He has earned and deserves to be the face of the company, uh, of this company, and it feels like he is just tapping into his potential. Uh, just wait till we see him go heal. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I have to, I have to wonder when he does go heal, will it be the best heal ever? Yes. When? Like, when he goes like, heel. do you no, think? Do you he's think he heal on total divas? Uh, but, but but he goes heel across the board, or he's spitting on kids. He's going the extra mile. Do we get to the point? Wait, if John Cena wait. goes heel, it's a throwback to the days where the fans were. It, it, it is not successful in John Cena's eyes until there are fans slashing his tire, tires and assaulting his limo on his way out of the arena, just like back in the day. I think that is dedication to his craft. And what does he need to do? He needs to snitsky, snitsky kick a real baby. He needs wow. to. This is what John Cena needs to do to go heal the right way. Okay? we. It's really a fake baby, but we'll tell everybody it's a real baby. He's going to be wow. the one that pushes the Wiley Coyote plunger to blow up Vince's limo this time. Okay? He's going to be the one. Uh, he's going to be the, the other one. He The, the taker is going to get another a streak of 20 just so john cena beats him to lose the streak again okay that's everything, what you, everything. What? He, so he's gonna be the one in 31 and two that's right so, that's right so 
So you're you're saying that the Undertaker is going to have ten more WrestleMania matches, eleven more, I guess, and he's going to lose John Cena, right? To, just so he goes even more heel. Okay, that's a, he's that's gonna a lot punch. Of matches with Sting, sword. He's yeah. gonna punch bump, bumpy knuckles in the face and call himself the baddest man. That's how heel he's gonna be. You don't, you don't punch bumpy knuckles. Sword. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't. He's gonna tell trade mo- trademark the truth that he's a lie. Ooh. There you go. Even though he is working for TNA. Let me know what you think. Let me know. Probably nobody's working for TNA these days. Definitely not the Dudley boys. Um, so anyways, ah, boys. if you have a thought, what is what What was the question again? How, how did what we do you love? love? What do you love about John Cena? What do you love? Tell us what do you love about John Cena and you will get a copy. You have a chance to get a copy digitally of IWC's Cage Fury 2015 courtesy of IndieWrestling.us including Tommy Dreamer versus Rhino in a cage. War games including Bubba the Bull. Dog, if you know who that is, uh, if you're here local, Mark Madden of WCW fame is on commentary for both of the cage main events. Uh, amazing three way match with the friends of the show, Andrew Palace, Alex Daniel, and Dylan Bostic. Women's wrestling with some friends of the show. Great stuff. Jock Sanson didn't die almost, crushed the chair. He crushed the chair in the second row. Mm-hmm. Just got that news from the promoter uh, a couple minutes ago. I heard there was a Wings reference during a match. There was a Wings and Paul McCartney match uh, reference during a War Games match. How does that happen? Only Joe Dabrowski and Mark Madden know how. What's that? Paul McCartney. That's right. It happened. (laughs) It happened. Bobby of J-Town is going to tell us about that. Uh, But anyways, and you can find out more about that. Hopefully we have you guys on to talk about on Indie Mayhem show. I don't know if you guys are sticking around quite so late, Uh, but uh, but that will definitely come up. Uh, And last week... No, never mind. I don't have a thing for that. That's okay. So next thing coming up, that's the big question for this week. Uh, but first, please go check out, hey, uh, get Mayhem on your back. Check out our friends, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. There's some shirts there. Great designs by our friend Alex Cards. The good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, Bobby was sporting some of that uh, this weekend. Thank you for that, Bobby. Representing Wrestling Mayhem Show at Cage Fury with the IWC. And also, we do have a link over there, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Check out all the friends of WrestlingMayhemShow.com. But we got links. If you hit the Mayhem Club, there's uh, Don't Be a Smart Ass is up there. Actually, we have a few t-shirts that we came up with tonight. Uh, not necessarily wrestling related. Uh, hmm. Because if, you, if you're somebody that joins us, Tuesday night is podcast night for you. It's a podcast night in Pittsburgh is uh, what we came up with tonight. There's something else that we did too. Somebody sent it to me. Uh, but we're having some 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 fun over here and uh we're hoping we can represent and you guys can represent what we're got what we're doing here uh and support the shows um we don't get much off the t-shirts to be honest but it's more just a a a, a you know hopefully somebody asks say what is that and uh and you're saying well of course that's a wrestling mayhem show dear grow up and watch <laughs> yeah. it grow up grow a pair yeah. and watch the damn wrestling mayhem show okay uh but go check out all that stuff WrestlingMayhemShow.com. So let's get into We have some emails, which I think is going to drive the rest of tonight's conversation. So let's uh, hop in there uh, while we still have time before our guest tonight on the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, so I'm in the wrong uh, document. We do, we do have a comment about, um, I think Matt's, we can read Matt Carlin's email and then he has a comment in the chat room. Oh, well, first, I've, I want to do Ciro's email because it's a lot quicker okay. and we okay. may lose somebody after reading it. Uh, so, dear Papa Lunchbox, uh, so I'll put this on you. Uh, consider this your moment of zen. Sorry, I'm not sorry. Sincerely, John Stewart. Sorry, Albia, I couldn't help it. Do you need a hug? Putting the smart back in smart mark, Alex Cars. Uh, Alex, or I'm sorry, uh, Lunchbox? Asked and answered. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he stole that joke from me. Mm-hmm. All right, <laughs> he did. He, he didn't. Did. Every single person on the internet told that joke. There you go. Well, well, he, I say it first I in seen our it circle. Everywhere. <laughs> I say it first in our circle. <laughs> anyways, anyways. Regardless, uh, we did have the uh, uh, this other email. This has been a, a moment of contention. I don't. Okay, I have no problem that Carlin's used the wrestling mayhem show name. He represents it. That's fine. Um, We'll get into this. Uh, Women's wrestling in WWE is at an all-time high. Now, if we'd only get to see it on Raw. 
point. The reason the crowd in Brooklyn turned on Monday night's match is so simple. They've been given no reason to care. The Diva Revolution is going in circles and getting nowhere. Yes, we're getting good matches, but a match is just a match. Without a storyline to drive the action, it's meaningless. That's where we are in the Divas Revolution. We need a story, not just matches. We need a hero to cheer and a villain to boo. Not bizarre character traits like Becky Lynch being a goofy member of PCB who talks about dinosaurs and cyborgs. When did that happen? Uh, that was during Ms. TV. Oh, okay. I guess I zoned out for a moment. I, I was just looking at I, Becky I think Lynch. one of the main problems with this is... Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got, oh, okay. We got more email. We got more email. But, but I, And I think it's more... In the, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't understand how everyone can understand this except for the people in charge of Raw. Well, we've gone into that. Before I finish, I want to thank everyone who's supporting the Strip Nikki movement and signed the petition to change.org. A champion who actually defends his or her title every 30 days shouldn't be too much to ask for. And as I recently wrote on my blog, it's not a revolution until the queen is dethroned. Your mainstream, main, your mainstream media homeboy, mainstream Matt, home of the TNA big board, www.change.org. No, 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 we're not doing that part. Um, but anyways, no. So, 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 so uh, to your point, and we'll get into this whole change.org. And actually, I'm realizing I think I misinterpreted the the petition, and to, for that, I apologize. And I'm 100 percent for strip Nikki, Mike. <laughs> um, in a moment. See, I I think we've misinterpreted. This entire Divas Revolution thing. Mm -hmm. um, because, see, Revolution has two meanings, Sorg. One is dethroning a change of power. And the other definition literally means to go in a circle. <laughs> I, okay, I, okay. I think instead of a revolution, we need an evolution. Okay. And I think that's kind of like what i think that's what the hashtag should be because the divas evolution is becky coming up is charlotte coming up is the four horsewomen like if there was a divas evolution which is evolution is wwe's version of the four horsemen that's it right there they even did the four horsemen pose at the end of takeover um i think that's kind of what we need like and now the rumor is going around the internet, as Matt said in the chat room, that Nikki's title reign is pretty much Cena's fault, or that Cena's the one pushing for her to keep the title. Don't know. Again, none of us know if that's true. Purely it's speculation. Absolutely speculation. It's it's internet pure, speculation. Yeah, it's, it's pure dirt speculation. Sheet. Yeah, dirt sheets. But uh, it could be it could be grounded in stuff. It could just be they don't want AJ's name on the record books but we need to uh, like like i said we need to stop calling it a revolution and start calling it an evolution we need to that's the reason people were so invested in bailey and sasha mm -hmm. because you can't like there is no women's match on raw or smackdown that you can have that kind of video package for there's no feud like that on between divas on Raw and SmackDown, where you can have that kind of video package between Sasha and Bailey. Like uh, one of my friends I was with didn't really wa didn't really care about Bailey. Like wasn't invested in her character at all. Um, after I punched him in the face, uh, he saw the video package. I'm kidding about that, by the way. After he saw the video package, he was like, "Oh my god, I really want to see Bailey win," because they have like a two year long story about this. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's what sells. That's always been what sells in wrestling. So instead of going around circles, like making many, many, many revolutions, we need to evolve it. Wow. Wow. Um, LP, you've been watching Raws. You've been, you've been you catching up with this. I, I don't know how heavy with NXT and everything. What do you think about the current state of it? I mean, we got a bunch of new faces, but are we just doing, doing the same old shit at this point? Um, I think that, uh, uh, the idea that we would get something different is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this, <laughs> I mean, what, what did they, so they brought up these new, very talented wrestlers, um, did people think that suddenly they were going to completely change the way the entire business works? Mm -hmm. No, the, they're doing, 
they they are essentially doing that. They're giving them more time. They're having matches on TV, and they are um, more skilled wrestlers than uh, than we've had in the past, with a few notable exceptions. I think I think it goes to show that you know uh, when wrestling fans will complain about something, and when they get what they want, what they really want is something new to complain about, and they'll find mm-hmm. it. And, and and to go off your point, uh, uh, Matt, I take no disregard for what I'm about to say, but uh, I, I remember a couple weeks ago we were we were sitting here and we were saying that the Divas Division is the worst division in the history of the WWE for a while. That, that, was, that was the words that came out of our mouths, all of our mouths, I believe. Not mine. And, well, the the divas division, not 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 NXT, WWE. No, I know. I, I still don't uh, think it was right. back then. There's, I, there's I, been I some bad Kelly stuff. Kelly. Yeah. No, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> but regardless, your point. Yeah, yeah. Regardless. Your point, yeah, sorry. Uh, after they went up, you, you said that's how they need to get some spark into them. They need to have some some diva like Becky Lynch or or Sasha Banks or, or or Charlotte come up and you know put themselves in those situations and get the people out of there you know give divas a chance they're giving divas a chance but it's not the chance that we want them to have apparently we want them to be there and then be given a title because mm-hmm. because Nikki Bella, uh, but but we have to let everything settle because right now they were booed out of the building two two weeks in a row, which uh, which I, I'm which I don't even want to get into. But even when they were getting booed out of the building, they were putting on decent enough matches to no to no reaction whatsoever. And, and we, we don't have what we want. We ask for it and then we get it and we don't want it. So we don't want it again. We ask for something else. And it it just seems like we're just go, we're the ones going around in circles. I think like divas are just like, well, divas are also going around probably in a different direction than us, which is going to be confusing. Uh, but it, we don't know what we want yet because this is Divas Wrestling on WWE TV. Mm-hmm. On Raw, well, I'll tell you what we want. Smackdown. What everybody wants is NXT Women's Wrestling. Yeah. Everybody, and and everybody unfortunately, wants again, the girls are having good matches on Raw yeah. despite the writing. Yeah. Despite the writing. And where are you going to put them? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. It's like in NXT, you have the ability to go, they're co main events. Yeah. But yeah. in WWE, they're gonna be filler. Yeah, because that's the spot because they're given. That's, that's I, I mean, I mean, you have you, you again. You see women getting floundered because, like, oh, oh, the answer is let's bring these women out and let's have a revolution. Mm-hmm. And then, and then all we know to do with them is put them in configurations of nine people that that do this thing over here. And then we forgot about all these other girls, you know. Um, and again, I don't know. I, I'm not watching enough of superstars and may event to see if there's interesting mixes of people happening. Uh, I know Becky Lynch has popped up on there. There's some other things that have happened over there. Uh, maybe the good stuff is happening down there on those shows, right? But still, it's top down. You know, if you're not doing interesting things on, on 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 the top on Raw, then nobody thinks your division is worth anything. So. Mm-hmm. But uh, th- the thing is, though, like we want them to be equal. If getting a 14-minute match in the middle of Raw with no purpose or direction doesn't mean being on the exact same level as Sheamus and Randy Orton, then, I mean, I think they're kind of getting that chance. Like, Because how many matches on Raw have no purpose? Mm -hmm. Like, not not so much last night, because they only had four matches. But... A lot of times on Raw, we get tons of matches that have no point at all. So 
the fact that they're doing it with the Divas too and just giving it longer time kind of puts them on the same level. Mm-hmm. That's why that's why I think we don't want them – like we need to change that. And I think a lot of people did think that bringing in the NXT people would change it. And it just hasn't happened quickly enough for everyone yet. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, on that note, I think it's time to find out what you learned, although it seemed very educational from the discussion we just had. Uh, it's time <laughs> to find out what you guys learned from wrestling this week. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Oh, LB. Stephen Amell acts better in the ring than he does on his own TV show. Oh, Bam, don't ouch. at me. Do not Bam. at me. Everybody at him. I don't care at about DJ your opinion. Lunchbox, at I don't care. Man show, at Mayhem Show. <laughs> at Amell, whatever his name is. Amell Wood. Perfectly yeah. nice fella. Perfectly nice fella. Good for him. That hurts me. You hurt me. I love this show. Uh, I love I, that show. Yeah, Sorg, Sorg it's okay. We'll agree to disagree. With I, I feel just fine by what he said, uh, but I learned. <laughs> Thank you, I Chris. learned uh, that I at, at age 20, 28 years old, I can still get scared at somebody doing a wrestling match because that big motherfucker of Braun, mm-hmm. Braun Stone, <laughs> scared the crap out of me. It looked like he was dragging Roman Reigns from his jaw, and he just killed him. And it, like, it, it scares me. And it also, you know, Xavier Woods makes me happy. Um, I <laughs> I learned that Bully Ray seemed to recover from his uh, attack backstage quite nicely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that story is never going to be re- resolved, kids. Don't don't even look for it on DNA. It's never going to be resolved. What if he has a twin? And the best part is the the best part about Dudley showing up on WWE. Everything on TNA until Bound for Glory is in the can, hmm? so they can't e- they can't even respond. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. They can't even respond. They're going to be talking about a WWE superstar being injured on their show for weeks. It's going to be amazing. It could be. Yeah. Let me know if there's any creative editing going on over there. Oh, Sorg. There's creative. nothing There's nothing creative going on over yeah, there. Yeah, th- thanks for that. I was going to say, there's nothing no, Nothing TNA has ever done in the past but, five years. By the way, Sorg, if anyone wants to have a Destination America watch party. No. I'm, I'm compl- No, no. Sorg, if anyone you know wants to have a Destination America watch party. I'm entirely down for that. Burr, 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 burr. Anyway, what'd you learn, Sork? Man, I've learned so much this week. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of part of it. Um, but, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, geez, what did I learn? What did I learn? I learned, I, you know, I learned, I learned about germaphobe wrestlers this weekend. Uh, for one thing, uh, that's something you can talk to me off about on offline. Mm-hmm. It's a very interesting story for that. Um, yeah, also, so told me, and I'm like, he, really? really? I, I, yeah, it was it was an interesting experience. Um, I also learned. Uh, I, <laughs> I also learned, like, even you know, I'm involved with the production, and and uh, we don't exactly communicate typically with the bookers. We just kind of go and film whatever's in front of us. We do get heads up every once in a while about things to mm-hmm. make sure we don't miss it. Um, but, uh, I, I do enjoy when, when I'm left in the dark and I can sit there behind the monitor as a fan and, and kind of pop, uh, sorry, Rob and AJ for, for, for maybe screaming in your ears a couple times <laughs> at a couple things that happened, particularly when Jock Sampson almost died by crushing a chair in the second row. Um, uh, but, uh, Jock Sampson almost died as well as a fan almost died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there's that. Uh, but, uh, no, John McChesney coming back. Uh, with the lights out and you know how am i thinking when i have like video equipment going and everything and all of a sudden the lights go out without anybody telling me about it uh and i'm like oh god is this a spot or did we lose power (laughs) did i just lose the show uh (laughs) so and it turns into a guy in a mask and and we have an awesome spot going on there but um uh but no it's still still a big fan regardless of how close i may be to wrestling or anything like that 
uh, I love that they can still pop me with something like that, you know, and uh, and and just just a really cool moment. Um, what's this? Loco bone learned that Loma equals Loco bone. What? I, what is Loco bone doing here? Loco bones in the chat. Holy crap! Loco bone, what is? up well yeah, yeah chat room what did you, timbits what did you learn uh, a loma oh i guess this has something to, to, to do with the chat because uh loma learned that the face paint comes off rapidly even when you're a statue sting we didn't even talk about sting uh i'm sure we will in the coming weeks uh the, some guests in here learned that rhino coming up behind you without you knowing he's there is legit one of the scariest moments ever especially when you had a nightmare that he stole your tricycle that's bobby, <laughs> that's bobby. <laughs> That is Bobby. That is Bobby. Um, well, I had a similar moment where Tommy Dreamer like kind of snuck up behind me when I was looking at the run sheet for the night. I'm like, what? Hey, Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I shook the camera on that one. <laughs> Um, uh, from, from the Facebook, there was actually a lot, a lot of responses to what you learned in wrestling this week. Thank you, everybody, for participating in that. Uh, Kyle learned that the Dudley boys uh, hate brass instruments and the ogre from <laughs> Revenge of the Nerds had a kid that got into wrestling. Ron Stillman. Uh, <laughs> Alan in there, new name, I think. I, I'm not familiar. Thou shalt not intentionally provoke uh, Brock Lesnar. Uh, Matthew in there, uh, seeing his heel turn will be epic. Ah, see, I'm not the only one. I'm not the it's only one. It's never gonna Yeah, happen. people have been calling Cena turn Turning heel. I'm not saying it's happening next week. I'm never. saying in like five, ten he, years when we were finally sick will, of them. No, nope. as soon, never, as, ever as, soon as you get someone to replace those merch sales, mm -mm. you know what? Then, you know what's a beautiful thing? He's already heel. Mm -hmm. It's all perspective. You know, yes. when you're out there and you're like, man, Cena's kind of an asshole. Yep. Yep. Listen, look at Cena now and look at the matches that Hogan was having. Okay. Hogan did the same heel tactics exactly. that Cena's exactly. doing now. What will Cena happen? will never turn heel. What do you think will happen if if he turns heel? I he already told you what would happen if he turns heel. People, people are going to cheer him because they they think they did it. <laughs> They, they think they, they were we the ones. Did it. We booked this shit just like Daniel Bryan. Oh, yeah. Man. It's been too long. It's been too long. Anyways, back to this. Uh, Daniel says that the booking can't do what's best for the revolution because they're spiteful of that MMA guy from Chicago and his wife. Oh, no. I don't think it's that deep rooted. Uh, Garza learned that wins and losses don't matter in WWE. Dick, Nikki Bella, August 2015. What? Uh, yeah. Nikki, Nikki said wins and losses don't matter on Ms. TV. Mm -hmm. uh, Jen says the latest member of the Wise Black Sheep is a former Rosebud. Yes. Uh, Alex learned that Alicia Fox has been with the WWE for nine years. And he didn't have good things to say about that on Twitter, I think. Uh, Gabriel learned that uh, people are way too judgmental about wrestling. Thank you! Thank um, you. Everyone what was you bitching think? and moaning about SummerSlam. Is it, isn't that kind of what this whole thing is about, though? Yeah, like, it is. Podcasts? I was like, well, then why do we have podcasts? Uh, it was good, a good pay-per-view. The wrestling was on point, not to mention the storytelling was amazing, which will in turn pay off with stories in the future. Uh, I think that everyone needs to step back and enjoy for entertainment. That is, uh, yes. and stop being such a such Who's smart that? asses. That? That's all Who's Gabriel. That? That's all our boy Gabriel in Portland. It's all Gabriel. Mr. Gabriel. I love you, man. That's what that we're about. Awesome. I mean, that's that's what I I preach that's, a little bit. Like you need to just awesome. sit sit back and enjoy the damn wrestling, right? I mean, just, just just like you're here to be entertained. You're here to accept this, you know. Um, and it's freaking and, weird to begin and, uh, with. We got one from Twitter. Uh, it, it was from our our, our good friend Ed Burke, thirty seven. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a visual aids work, so you have to see oh, it. Oh no. Uh, he just said he learned that the internet can still be a wonderful place. Oh, mm -hmm. is that the th that? It's um, a picture thing. of it's a picture of Undertaker in the middle of Bailey's entrance. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that, that's a good one. That's a really good yeah, one. Yeah, it's it's kind of the best thing in the world because mm -hmm. it has Taker raising his arms like he's turning on the lights, but in the middle of all of Bailey's wacky waving inflatable tube men. And it says <laughs> Taker right there. Um, yeah. Another new another new name. I don't I I don't recognize this one. John John Julian here. Uh, you can in fact parlay re wearing a wedding dress in a Doritos commercial into a wrestling career. What? Who are we talking about there? Oh the, no the um, the the guy looks like uh, 
the guy in that one commercial with the Doritos commercial. I don't I don't know this one. But anyways, I have no way to do with that. Uh, Matt Carlin's learned that uh, WWE screwing with. Matt Carlin's learned that WWE screwing with TNA is way more fun when WWE screws with Ring of Honor. Uh, yeah. And well, Wheels learned that indie wrestling is picking up again in Pittsburgh. Great job, RWA and IWC, for amazing crowds over the weekend to end the summer. Both did well over 300, uh, from what I understand. So it's, it's pretty good for an indie show, that's for sure. Right? Um, that doesn't have the marketing budget of everybody else. So... Uh, but no, both did awesome. We'll talk about that on Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, 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 I know both have big shows coming up uh, after or Aftershock for IWC this next month. Uh, RWA is, is headlining their September show, which, by the way, we'll talk about this uh, somewhere along the lines. Uh, RWA is going to have Amazing Red versus Sanjay Dutt. Down the road for them will be Impact Wrestling with a house show. And I mean down the road. I'm talking like probably five minutes down the road. They're going to be a... <laughs> impact house show and i want the I over guess. under from you guys tell me i don't want you guys to answer right now but let me know the in, over under on twitter of what how of uh rwa's house versus impact's house for that night what do you think is going to happen there um just just a side note there i did like this is this is going to be the story of september i think is what happens can rwa outdraw impact wrestling that's on tv well, they already pulled away one of their competitors, and Sandra Dutt clearly won't be representing GFW that night. <laughs> uh, by the way, RWA, well, RWA with a working relationship with G G Global Force yeah, Wrestling. GFW, like, of course. Like, like yes, th there is a working relationship there with, with them. So I was just about to say that, too. I was like, which is really wait, funny. Are they working with each, with each other now? Yeah, yeah. So, that I, I don't know. I, it, 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 it'd be curious. It'd be curious to see what's going to happen there. So, Or is it all part of it? No. I'm, no, no. No, as, no, I don't no, think so. No. Guys, thank you so much. So much fun talking with you guys. You're Check out the Indie Mayhem show. We're going to have a great interview coming up. And, uh, and, and thank you, everybody in the chat room. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the new chat room. Having fun there. Everybody's yelling RWA in the chat room as well. <laughs> Uh, support strip Nikki. Look for the change.org. Uh, we get the 100 petition signs and then something happens. We will strip. We will strip. <laughs> Check out 412 206 WMS0 is the hotline. We haven't heard anybody for a while on there. I want to hear a voicemail next week. I might have something special for you if you put a voicemail in there. Uh, so Ooh. please do oh, that. Good. We Go are talking. Come on. Come on, man. Uh, also, drop us an email too. Good times. Good times at Wrestling Mayhem Show.com. Subscribe to us, like us. Please, if you dig us, share it with your friends. Make the Mayhem Show grow. Yeah. And uh, check out everything else. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. The Riz at Riz Plays Games for him. And at the E Riz. Yes, that as well. That as well. Mad Mike is at Mad Mike4883 on the Twitter. Basic Hugonomics. Basic Hugonomics. And uh, DJ Lunchbox, he's uh, 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 on the Twitters. He's po uh, Panel Riot, of course, panelriot.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, something called Sawtooth Willie. Check out those videos as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm at Sorgatron. You can tweet me on there and check out everything else going on at sorgatronmedia.com. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>